Hi guys, this is jsnall.com and I'm here with the Motorola One Fusion Plus. Perhaps one of the last phones that features a pop-up selfie camera. Now we're dealing here with a mid-range handset that became cheaper very fast and as usual for a Motorola it's got a um, well clean version of Android. Now priced at around $200 250 tops. This is a quad camera smartphone with a big battery and a Snapdragon mid-range CPU you have seen before. Now let's talk about the design first and foremost. As you saw in the unboxing, this handset comes with a bundled case which saves its slippery nature and also saves its fingerprint drawing backside. As you can see, it collects quite a few fingerprints and grease, so a case is definitely necessary. This is a plastic material, plastic also for the frame, but there is glass at the front as you can figure out already. The build is, I would say, quite solid, but this handset feels quite uh, massive, especially wide. The width is the one which stands out here. 9.6 millimeters in thickness and a weight of 210 grams, but I would say it's well worth it considering the rather large battery inside. So the build is okay, the buttons are pretty comfortable, but it's slippery and uh, needs a case to avoid the uh, fingerprints and all that. I should also mention a slightly water repellent coating. Now the screen you're seeing here which may not feel like it's very bright, but you can tweak that. Uh, it's a 6.5 inch IPS LCD with a Full HD Plus resolution and also there's HDR10 support, which is good news if you like a wider palette of color. An interesting feature here, so I'm going to start a demo for the uh, screen and you're going to notice something. The fact that the corners of the screen are rounded, all four of them, and that there's a bit of a chin here, but I would say that the experience is immersive on account of not having a notch or a punch hole in the screen. Now, the brightness is rather modest and when you're tilting the phone, the image gets a bit grayer as you can probably notice for yourself, so you lose some of the color when you're doing the tilting. Now, it's bright enough for indoors, but for outdoors, the contrast is not enough, even at this price tag. So, there is that. So, colors, okay, brightness, okay, but if you go outdoors on a sunny day and if you like angles, not the best in the world. The pixel arrangement is of the RGB stripes variety, and uh, uh, we have a brightness test here. As you can see, the result is rather modest, but still within our regular limits, 408 lux units. It's okay, it's above OnePlus Nord and Motorola One Action, but below the Moto G5 G Plus and the Huawei P40 Lite. Okay, now uh, you can also do some tweaking as far as the colors of the screen are concerned. So you can go here and you can go to the display section, advanced and colors can be set to natural, boosted or saturated. So there's that. Now we go inside the phone where we find a pretty familiar face. I'm talking about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730 CPU 8 nanometer seen on the Galaxy A71, Galaxy A80 and accompanied by uh, 6 gigs of RAM as you can see here and 128 gigabytes of storage, UFS 2.1 and a micro SD card slot for, well, extra storage space. Now the good news is that I, I didn't uh, encounter any sort of lag, problems whatsoever, no stutter, no freezes. You can easily play games like Asphalt 9 or other things like that and even Call of Duty Mobile. Details would closely be too high rather than ultra in this case or even medium if you want flawless performance. Speaking of performance, we also did some benchmark here, here and let's see how, what came out of that experience. So on 2 to 8, definitely still relevant even though forbidden in most app stores. Here we go. As you can see, just above the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 and the Galaxy A71. Now, I should probably mention that we scored below the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 Lite and below the Motorola Moto G9 Plus, which we're testing and we'll be back with a full review soon. And at the same time, in Geekbench 5 multi-core, here we are above the Galaxy A71, Xiaomi Mi Note 10 again. These seem like the proper landmarks to stand out against. We also beat the Realme 6 and scored below the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 Lite and the Moto G9 Plus. When it comes to gaming, the GPU is tested with 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme ES 3.1. And as you can see, we're beating Huawei Nova 5T, Xiaomi Mi 90, but we're staying below 
uh, the Mi Note 10 and Redmi Note 8 Pro. I would say it's okay for a Snapdragon 730 CPU device. And let's see if the temperature has been sacrificed in any way. So in games, it's 35.4 degrees Celsius, definitely not overheating. And in benchmarks, it's, well, 44 degrees Celsius. So in order to achieve that performance, there's overheating. It really tunes up the device quite a bit. So beware of that. Now, when it comes to the battery, it's one of the selling points here. 5000 mAh lithium polymer with 15 watt charging. Now, this actually is a pretty solid aspect of the phone, especially the video playback of 17 hours and 34 minutes. It's top 40 for sure. Just a minute above the Oppo Reno 4 Pro 5G and also beating other phones out there like the Redmi Note 9 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite 5G. It stays below the OnePlus Nord and the Galaxy A71 as well as the Moto G8 Power, which you probably expected because that's a battery phone. Now, if you want more, this is the continuous usage and it's actually more impressive. It's top 20 material, 16 spot, 15 hours and 18 minutes. It beats phones like the Galaxy S10 Lite and the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, which were landmarks in their day. And um, it stays below a few heavy hitters out there, like the uh, Xperia 10 II and the Xiaomi Mi 90 or the Galaxy A31. But overall, a pretty nice performance battery-wise, but the charging is definitely underwhelming. Uh, 2 hours and 17 minutes and after 30 minutes you're at 34% after 1 hour you're at 64% expected faster charging would have made the phone great now we're done with that aspect time to talk about the speaker and audio experience now when it comes to the acoustics we have a singular speaker here at the bottom and also at the bottom there is the audio jack and i think it's time to turn it up and i'm talking about the music here we go Okay, so plenty of high notes and if you're into house music, this is definitely a handset for you. Extremely loud, not much distortion, so that's nice. Sufficient bass for me and the high notes here are actually special. I would actually recommend it if you're into EDM. Okay, so let's see what the decibel meter is telling us. We achieved 89.5 decibels at the bottom with an acoustic sample, which is a high value because we surpassed Galaxy A70, Motorola One Vision and the Oppo Reno 3 Pro 5G, but we scored below the Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite 5G and below the Huawei P40 Lite 5G. The most impressive feature came in the gaming, as you can see, 101.7 decibels here, beating quite a few phones, the 40th spot, beating Galaxy A71, staying below the Motorola G8 Power and the Galaxy A31. So, color me pretty impressed and we should also have some features here for uh, tweaking the music. They should be here somewhere, uh, audio effects. They're disabled right now, but you can definitely add some extra vocalizer or bass in your life by accessing this area. Okay, so we're happy with the music. Would have been nicer with stereo speakers, but one of them should do. Now, on the camera front, let's talk. So, first of all, we got a motorized pop-up selfie camera, which you can see here. And uh, this one, it's a 16 megapixel camera. Okay, and uh, it has f2.0 aperture and you can take full HD videos. And if you go to the back side, you've seen this design before on other Motorola phones. It's shaped like an exclamation mark. It's got the LED flash here and it's got a quad camera setup. The main camera is a 64 megapixel shooter accompanied by the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, 5 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel bokeh camera. It films in 4K, it has, uh, well, typical features for Motorola phones and uh, I'm talking about portrait, spot color, cutout, night vision, panorama and so forth. This uh, main sensor, the 64 megapixel one, is a Samsung ISOCELL Plus GW, so there's that. Actually, three out of the four cameras are Samsung sensor based. Okay, so I think it's time to go to the gallery. We have quite a few shots here. And here we go. Now, first of all, I have to mention it was a very cloudy day. It's fall after all. It's the last month of fall, November right now. Those were taken in October. I had to use HDR a bunch of times to get things a bit clearer.
Now, uh, pictures are going to look a bit murky and a bit gray, but it has circumstances for that. I would say that uh, if you're looking at the regular shot and the ultra wide shot, you're going to notice some loss of detail. I'm happy with the details here, but if you're looking at the ultra wide, not many details. As you can see, this statue is very soft around the edges and the tree at the back barely reveals any leaves. Okay, when it comes to close-ups, I'm pretty happy with the results. At first, it took a while, but then I got accustomed to the macro and took some really beautiful shots. The colors are a bit dull and muted. As I said before, that's what happens on a cloudy day. Things get a bit underexposed, but it's actually a set of more realistic colors. If you look closely, the reds aren't, um, well, pink as it happens with some of the phones out there. So if you're into more accurate colors, this one feels like it wouldn't overexpose things during a summer day. Once again, excellent close-ups in both regular mode and macro mode, so that's definitely not going to be a problem. I'll skip over the masked uh, selfies and go to more areas. So once again, happy with the color calibration. Don't expect much from the zoom here, it's only digital. And we have a few shots, bokeh shots of a statue, well separated, actually very well separated from its background. Okay, impressed by the texture and color of the rose, many phones get this as pink instead of red, so definitely well calibrated reds. I have some missed macros here, attempts at macros, but in general things were fine. Okay, now for the selfies, things are actually better than I expected when I learned that the 16 megapixel camera actually takes 4 megapixel shots, combining 4 pixels in one. They're so good in the 4 megapixel resolution that I actually uh, reminded myself of the HTC Ultra Pixel, the one that made 4 megapixels cool, and bokeh is also well applied, highlighting each of the threads of hair on my face. So that's nice, a pleasant surprise in the selfie department, in a, even on a cheaper phone. Okay, so in general, the conclusion is that we're in the same line as the other Motorola One phones, maybe a bit better when it comes to exposure. The Motorola One Action had overexposure, Motorola One Vision as well, Motorola One Zoom got things right, so we're somewhere in the range of Motorola One Zoom, maybe Galaxy A31 and A41. I wouldn't go as far as to call it a Galaxy A51 or A71 rival, it's just a bit below their crispness. So that's daytime capture, let's see the low light capture. So these are the low light shots taken with the phone and I have to say I'm a bit surprised, pleasantly surprised, but it's not the first time. I remember that last year Motorola made some of the best phones, best mid-range phones when it came to low light pictures on a budget. And this also repeats here. We don't have many weird hues. Every once in a while there's a bit of purple or orange, but it doesn't happen very often. And if you're using the special night mode, you're going to be happy with the results. I'll say it again, colors are a bit warm and some shots are a bit red, but that's about 10% at most of the gallery. And results are quite impressive with the night mode on for a phone around 200 to $300. I'm talking about the clarity, I'm talking about the form of the light sources and also the quantity of light captured here. Okay, so since we're done pretty much with the um, photos, let's talk about the videos and we have an app for that. We have 11 camera videos, so let's take them one at a time. First of all, uh, let's see a stabilization test. This is a 4K stabilization test, I also have a Full HD one, there's a special stabilization option of the left side of the menu. As you can see, each step is accompanied by a small flicker, but the issue isn't very serious here, so I would say the stabilization is quite fine on this handset, considering it's not optical. Okay, uh, so this is video number one, we also did a focus test, it's this one here, alternated between foreground and background. A reasonably fast rate. We're working with a Samsung sensor after all and Samsung is usually adept at this kind of thing. Okay and uh, let's see what else. We also have colorful videos. If you really want details stick to 4k. I was pretty underwhelmed by what we achieved with the um, full HD videos. Even the 4k videos are a bit soft in the background so detail wise they could have been just slightly better so maybe keep that in mind. The color, the colors are well calibrated, especially the reds and the blues. But once again, when it comes to vegetation and the sky, they're a bit too white and overexposed for my taste. 
Okay, several more shots here, more videos here. Quality, focus, enough details, nice change of exposure, but in the end, you're better off filming with a Galaxy A51 or A71, to be honest. This is closer to the Galaxy A31 uh, rather than the even A41, so there's that. Of course, it has the big plus of filming in 4K, which the Huawei P40 Lite cannot do at a pretty close price. So these are taken during the day. Well, I would say I'm pretty impressed by the stabilization. Otherwise, uh, we needed a bit more detail in the 4K capture. Low light capture goes like this. As you can see, it's a bit shaky, a bit too warm color-wise, and the halos of the lights are quite big. However, it's not as bad as I've seen on other Motorola phones. It's actually improved a bit from last year, so that's something to remember. Okay, so mid-range to its core, that's the conclusion of the camera department with a big bonus for the selfies and stabilization and maybe the bokeh shots. Now on the connectivity front, you can already see the audio jack and the USB-C port at the bottom. This is a 4G LTE handset, of course, and it also comes with Wi-Fi dual band, Bluetooth 5.0, there's GPS and GLONASS here and Galileo and BDS. There's no NFC, oddly enough but we do have loud and clear calls and if you want to talk about the connectivity we have a speed test app which reveals i would say modest results usually they're a bit higher but here we go so 101 uh, mega per second in 4g downloads and the 66.1 mega per second in uploads on 4g as well uh, when it comes to wi-fi we are at 195 mega per second downloads and 22.7 mega per second in uh, uploads. Usually they're a bit higher than this, but this is a lower tier of mid-range, not your typical $400 mid-range phone. So we may be able to forget that. There's also FM radio here, just so you know. And now we have reached the software department where nothing has changed. If you've seen a Motorola phone recently, it's stock and clean Android. The only changes come in the form of a Moto app where you have your personalized option. You can uh, personalize here your styles, custom colors, custom fonts, and all that. So you can make the phone different from the other handsets out there, wallpapers and layout. And you can also play with the Moto Actions. Quite a few options here to add extra interactivity to your experience. There is the Moto Display, which only has the Pic Display, which replaces the Always On Display and the Moto Game Time for gamers. Other than that, it's, I would say, pure Android with the news here from Google with the uh, stock widgets, with the multitasking trigger like this, with a semi-swipe at the top, towards the top. And of course, you also have split screen. If you swipe down, you can see the notifications and quick settings, stock as well and for security we have a fingerprint scanner at the back side which mind you not the fastest in the world i mean it's a hit and miss sometimes it feels like it's really fast other times it feels like it's a half a second behind what i would like it to deliver okay i think that's that didn't forget anything here maybe except for the fact that we have an extra button which uh, triggers google assistant and the pre-installed apps don't include bloatware which is nice even though google has bloated up a bit over the past years now we have google one we have google home we have gmail we have maps we have news we have uh, podcasts we have sheets slides and youtube so after all we also have google fit and files so google itself is doing the bloatware not motorola interestingly enough okay i've talked about uh, enough about the phone i think it's time for the verdict and let's see what this handset has special in store for us so on the pro side, definitely the battery. Battery life is quite impressive here. I would say the brightness of the screen is okay indoors and so are the colors. I would also mention the performance, which is to be expected from this Snapdragon CPU. Good selfies, solid low light, low light pictures, loud speaker, clean interface, good bokeh and macro, audio jack and micro SD, all of them are on the pro side. On the cons, it's quite a slippery phone. It charges slowly. Um, the screen can become a bit gray at wider view angles. When you tilt it a bit, it becomes gray, as you can see for yourself, so you're losing some color. Uh, it's also a fingerprint magnet, and the fingerprint scanner isn't as fast as I'd like it to be sometimes. Video capture in general didn't blow me away, and the zoom, of course, not very impressive here, lacking a telephoto camera. Now, I know the exact type of people who are going to buy this phone. So, people who need a lot of battery life, charge the phone once every three days. Uh, 
People who need loud music, especially house EDM music, the speaker here somehow feels better when you listen to EDM music. People who want to take selfies and also who want to leave a mark when people see them taking selfies using that pop-up camera. It may be a remnant of the past, it can be the last phone with a pop-up camera, so buy it while it's still a thing. It's got a good price and once again, buy it for the battery, selfie and loud house music. That's the target audience in a nutshell. This is it from gsnl.com, hope you enjoyed the review, bye bye.